Who is Star-Lord? What's going on with this character? He used to look like this, but then you come over here, and now he looks like this. Why? I have a few theories. Maybe it's because Christopher Ronka turned him into the hunkiest man alive at Marvel Comics. Maybe he took his helmet off one day and said, hey, that helmet was really tight and I was acting like a hard ass because of it. Or a third option of a multitude of options. He found a cool new jacket and said, hey, this jacket is sick. And he discovered the meaning of life because of it. That third one might be onto something. Let's talk cold hard facts and go back to the year 2004 where he first appeared in Thanos number eight. And then he fucked off and did a bunch of annihilation stuff. It was an event with Annihilus, who's like a creepy bug boy. There he is. You're probably seeing him. How you doing? Oh, also, by the way, for any of you comic book elitists who are about to go into my comment section and say, actually, the original Star-Lord was from like 19 whatever, and he had astrology and shit, and he was, he was from the, he was a baby from the stars or some shit like that. That was retconned. That happened in an alternate universe. Star-Lord we're talking about, the Peter Quill we're talking about, 2004. That's where he started. Leave me alone. So eventually he sucker punched Annihilus and said, hey, all of you freaks that I just partied with, you want to form a team and guard the galaxy? So then they did. And the Guardians of the Galaxy were formed. The team that, again, we're talking about, not the one from way back when with, uh, you know, John Stamos on it and Kevin Bacon. We're not talking about them. We're talking about these guys from 2008, okay? After the formation of the Guardians of the Galaxy, they guarded the galaxy a whole bunch. There was some secret invasion shit going on, scrolls everywhere and a big alien head, celestial head. Are celestials aliens, technically? I guess alien is a relative word, so celestials don't come from Earth. So yes, they are alien if you're talking about alien to Earth. Anyway, after that, it was revealed that, uh-oh, Peter did a no-no. <laughs> he went up to Mantis and was like, hey, if you don't do what I tell you to do, I'm gonna squash you like the bug you are. Bet you never heard that before. And Mantis was like, you got it, chief. I will telepathically coerce all of the teammates that you want on your team to actually join said team, thus forming the Guardians of the Galaxy. It is I, Mantis, and I will do your bidding. He, he shouldn't have done that, it was a dick move. Don't telepathically coerce your warrior teammate Guardian Galaxy friends to join your superhero team. I'm sure they'll want to do it if you just ask. The point I'm trying to make here is that this was a very strategic play that lacked emotion, which is something that Peter Quill, played by Christopher Pratt, would not do. Eventually they got back together, warred some kings, and then fucked off for a while. But then, something happened. Something dark and mysterious. And maybe not so mysterious, because we sure talk about him a lot on this channel. Bendis happened. Brian Michael Bendis came on the scene and he said, look at all this shit, you know what? Fuck it, it's gone. Star-Lord was cracking jokes like he'd never cracked jokes before. He was like, what's funnier than 24? 25. And everyone was like, whoa, dude, you're so funny. And then he put on a new suit. And then it changed again like two issues later for no reason. And everyone reading these comics who liked Star-Lord before from Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning's run was like, what the fuck is going on? Who is this guy? He's not the Star-Lord I know. What's happening? Why is this happening? Uh oh. Shit. Yeah, that was funny. I'm high on believing. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Yep. So after this, as is the case with literally any property that gets a movie, the Guardians of the Galaxy skyrocketed in popularity. There were a million solo titles being launched for each and every character that were shortly canceled thereafter, but they were being pushed because of the movie. And also, he got a new costume change, again, to match that of the movie, apropos of nothing, again. And there is a few interesting tidbits about this. Hey, hey you, come here, come closer. We're gonna come into my conspiracy hole for a second and talk about release dates. So Guardians of the Galaxy, the movie, was released on August 1st, 2014. It was great. I saw it a bunch of times because my birthday is around that time. So I went to the movies a bunch and saw it. Anyway, the first comic where Star-Lord is wearing his movie costume was released on April 23rd, 2014. That's almost five months before the movie actually came out, you know, in the United States, everywhere people saw it and they were like, who the hell, who? There's that who? And then after they were like, what? also an interesting thing if we want to talk about more retcons is that uh, this costume, this movie costume was later retconned to be his costume and have always been his costume. He was like wearing it as a child and stuff. So Marvel just DNA. Mm. 
put it, nobody wants it. All right, so let's get back to the cold hard facts again. Why the hell did this happen? Like why actually? Not my theories, not what's going on. Why do I actually think this weird identity crisis, strange case of Star-Lord thing happened. As I alluded to earlier, it was the movie. The movie came out, which showed a different portrayal of Star-Lord than we saw in the comics, and Bendis was like, hmm, I like that. So we stuck it in the comics. This is something that we see all the time with comics adapting things from the movies for themselves. It's just not usually as drastic as with this strange case of Star-Lord. In fact, I have a Bendis quote here from an interview discussing the Guardians of the Galaxy relaunch that he was doing. It states, it, I lost it, where'd it go? Here it is. A lot of people know they're making a Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and one of my part-time jobs is to work with the Marvel Creative Committee. That work involves projects that everyone knows are in development, plus a bunch of stuff people don't know about where Marvel is deciding if it's something they want to do. This is something we've known for a while. Brian Michael Bendis has had his hand in development of some MCU movies, Guardians of the Galaxy being one of them. In the same article, he later goes on to talk about Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning's work in a very interesting way. He says this, And for fans of DNA's work, I'm a fan as well. This is an opportunity to try something new with these characters we all share this equal love for. I know change is scary, but I'm not changing the good stuff. I'm flat out stealing it. So characters like Groot will be there. He'll sound slightly more Jewish coming out of me, but he'll still be Groot. Which is a strange joke. But anyway, the point he's trying to make here is that Nothing will change. I'm gonna do things, but I'm gonna do things different, but also nothing will change. It's a very strange way to word the fact that he's changing everything, but he doesn't want to piss anyone off before the book comes out. There really isn't that much else to it. Bendis was on the creative team for Guardians of the Galaxy, and he decided to take a lot of the work that they were doing with the Star-Lord character and put it in his book. This also explains the costume change that happened before the movie came out. He, he knew that that was happening. I'm sure there were trailers out as well, but like, I'm sure he wanted to do that even before trailers dropped. And if I'm honest, the change between Dan Abnett's way of writing Star-Lord and Bendis' way of writing Star-Lord wasn't a complete 180. Dan Abnett's Star-Lord did make jokes. He was not a super hard ass all the time. He made some funny remarks. It's just that Bendis sort of sitcomified that trait and boosted it up to match that of Chris Pratt's portrayal and whoever wrote the movie, I don't know, I should probably do more research, in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. It really just goes to show how much subtlety and minutia of a character goes into what you like about them and what makes them, them. So at the end of the day, yes, Bendis clearly has a problem with disrespecting other people's continuity and just work on characters or stories that came before them. That is nothing new. I discussed this in a very large Bendis episode of Orms Forum way back when, and pretty much every time he comes up on this channel, that's what we're talking about. But yeah, it's just, it's nothing new. And honestly, the Star-Lord stories that we've gotten since his change are great. The movie was great. Both movies were great. All of the stories past, you know, the Bendisification or the, the, the funny joke Star-Lord, I liked them. So is it really such a bad thing? This is where I would make a very clever YouTube segue into the comments to say, hey, uh, talk about that down there, which is, I guess, what I'm doing. Hooked on a feeling I'm high on believing That you're in love with me It's as sweet as candy Its taste is on my mind Girl, you got me thirsting for another cup of wine